Hash House and Circle Up. Welcome to On On, the Hash House Harrier podcast for interviews, history, and stories. I'm your host, Ra. Hi, Run to Eat. This is Murphy's here. Hi, we're in lovely sunny Cardiff at the moment. We're about ready to go into the rugby game tomorrow to see the almighty see Wales. Wales. See Wales beat Scotland. And everything I don't think else. that's going to happen, but never mind. I'm sitting here in a lovely pub in Cardiff with Murphy's here. And I want you to first explain who are you, what's your mother hash, and what year did you start hashing? I'm Murphy's. My mother hash is Swansea Jack H3. There's only two hashes left in Wales now. What year did I start hashing? Sadly, I wasn't there in 2004 for Interhash because I wasn't hashing then. I think I started around about 2006. 2004 was legendary. I loved it. It was. And it brought your country pride. Yes. It's the only hash that's ever been in the UK. Interhash. Interhash, sorry, yeah. Murphy's explain your hash name. I drink a certain drink. And that drink is brewed in St. James's Gate in Dublin, in Ireland. I was named the hash name I wanted. And everybody else, I was stupid enough to say what that name was a minute to six. The reason for a minute to six is because the Guinness Brewery was founded in 1759. But because I said I wanted that, they didn't name me that. In the UK at the time, there were two rival Stout Beamish and Murphy's. So they called me Murphy's. That is brilliant. Tell me about your first hash. Where was it and how did you get to it? What made you go? Good question. And I've got a bad memory. Where was my first hash? I think I drank too many down downs to, 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 <laughs> to remember where it was thinking about it. But be, even before I joined the hash, they used to come to a place I, I went to and I went, what are these guys all about? All about? Excellent. What are your hash traditions and preferences? We'll get to the travel in a bit. You're a well-traveled hasher. You yeah. go around the world. You must have absorbed so many different places. What are your f- favorite of that coming back with the hash? Well, just laid a trail for Key West Hash House Harry's in South Florida. I was honored to lay that trail. So I was honored to lay that trail for Key West Hash House Harry's. They're my fa- most favorite hash in the world, kennel in the world. They're pretty good. And then my second one, and I have to say this, tongueless, if you're listening, Gypsies in the Palace in San Francisco, <laughs> you're great as well. Third, probably Swansea Jack. Sad when your kennel comes third in the competition, but there we go. And then after that, every other hash. Do you remember what even brought you to the first task and what your very first trail was? No, I don't actually. The best memory for you. Okay. Just... What about setting trail? Do you remember setting your first trail? Yes. We set it from a a pub called the Schooner in Swansea. And my tutor, if you like, was a hasher called Barrels, John Ford, if you know him. That's where I learned to set my first trail. What are your preferences for trails? Flat, no shiggy, lots of drink stops. And uh, yeah, short. Sure. What has drawn you? What has made you continue? And what drew you to international travel? Did you decide when you first started that this is worldwide and I just am going to travel? I used to travel before. I've worked on the West Coast of the US. I've worked on the East Coast of the US. I've worked in various places in Europe before I found the hash. I wish I'd found it many years before I found it. A but, lot of people say that. Yeah, but it's. Yeah, it's water to the bridge now. Where is the longest you've been hashing? What place? Swansea, Swansea I would say. Yeah, Swansea. And what's your second longest? Possibly Cardiff. No, one of the London hashes. Okay. West London, probably, or City, or maybe even London in H3. I know it's a big debate at the moment. Mick, single sex, hashers, what's your take on that? I don't understand the question. Sorry, mix. Mick, sex. <laughs> Boy and girl or single sex hashes. What's your take? I don't care. There. 
it's 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 not relevant to me. <laughs> Everyone has a story oh. that no one believes. If it wasn't for the hash, we did. Mm. Tell me that story. I've got a recent one, and that's on Christmas Day last year. I took a certain international traveler. You can then mention him. Patrick Hash Traveler. I got him on the flight deck with photos, which you might see, of a Airbus A380 <laughs> wearing the captain's hat. That's not bad. That's the most recent big thing I've done. But I've done lots of big things, but we... We'll come back to that. We'll come back to those we, ones. We can do a part two. Do you have any experience of if it wasn't for the hash, this wouldn't happen? Because the hash is well connected and things happen. And I know most people I've interviewed have several. You, you're absolutely right. You use the right word there, connected. The people you meet can open doors for you. I can open doors for them but they're different doors. So that's how hashing works. A lot of us are quite, I don't know, let's call it influential in certain spheres and we can do things. So that's the beauty of the hash. Do you have any stories with an awesome connection that hash connected you to? Probably, but I can't tell you them. Okay. <laughs> it's official secrets. <laughs> what drives you to continue with hashing? I love it. What would you tell yourself now that you would tell yourself when you first started? Ooh, that's an interesting question. Just enjoy it. Just do it. Don't be stressed by anything. It's when you first join the hash, it's not stressful, but it's like, <laughs> what am I getting into? What's this strange, possibly strange world that I'm getting into? Right. When you've been hashing for a while, you go, hey, is this just normal? Really? People do silly things. I do silly things. And that's the way it works. What is the scariest or baddest hash memory oh, that you know. have? Not being heard on trail, because that's another question. Just an experience on a hash or on trail or whatever that was just like, that was an experience. I'm stumped for words now because I'm trying to drag my memory and I can't think of anything. So I'll skip that question for a moment if you don't mind. Mentors, who on the hash, name names, they love it. Who have you met on your travels that you've just been, those people are just amazing. I've met so many people and as I say, I've just come back from Key West and I've got to do a shout out to Dashi Blows and Lucy. And Lovely um, people. also to Donkey Fluff and happy birthday to his son, Ruck, who was a six son in earlier on in January. I'd met lots of people and everyone's influential in life. You listen to people. If you no. don't listen to people, you're stupid. You're dumb. You're, yeah. You know what? I've met lots of good people. I just can't think of it. Should mention Tungless in San Francisco. Hi, Bert. But there's loads and loads of people. How many away hashes, big events, have you been to? Oh, I don't know. I haven't got enough fingers to count them on. Put it that way. What was your favorite and the biggest then? Oh, biggest. I did go to UK Nash Hash in Perth in 2009. So that was probably the biggest. But my favorite, uh, I like hash campouts. Like, went to last year and i will say a big shout out to black death h3 and we had a great time and yeah and i was able to take my hash hound there who hasn't been named yet i should say she's a lovely dog she needs a hash name so people comment on this podcast for a black labrador retriever that is only 10 months old who has been to an away weekend. Do you like big away weekends or small away small. weekends? Small. Small. I like to talk to people. You go to big ones, you don't get the chop opportunity. 
Have you ever been hurt or injured or had to deal with someone that was hurt or injured on trail? I've no. never been hurt myself or injured. I've had to deal with other people that have been injured, yes. Can you tell the story? Probably not. The person concerned is now dead, but that's that. the injury did not cause his death. But yeah, we had to cut short the trail and get him to A&E as quickly as we could. Did you have ever any white powder incidents or police running yes. on the hash tells yes the, the the best one was my mother hash swansea jack i'd gone to canada for my nephew's wedding and i was the gm at the time and i'm suddenly getting all these stories at the time i'm laying a trail for ottawa hash house harry and um, there was police incidents of flour back home that had been recorded because they were having a trail in Swansea and I was however many thousands of miles away. Any others? You said you had several. What instances of child deaths? Police incidents, white powder incidents. I've been, been stopped by people going, why are you doing this? That's fairly common. And ironically, that wasn't flour. It was paint, and the person that lived in the village where we were going through had gone round, ripping them all down and going, what are you doing here? It, 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 that's the way the world works, unfortunately, these days. Yes. What's the wildest hashing story that you have in your wonderful collection? Something absurd, and I'm going to ask you for more than one because I'm sure well, you have a collection. I'm, yeah, I do, but I'm going to claim what's it called it's not habeas corpus but something like that and i'm not going to answer that question oh no we, we like crazy stories you don't have to name names or anything like a wildly hardly believable it happened on the hash story i'm trying to think you should have asked me that question before i could have prepared for it okay, okay. but i yeah think about it and we yeah. can come back for, for, for reasons of confidentiality and disclosure i don't think it's correct to answer that off the cuff at the moment on your travels are there any hash traditions that you particularly do not like do that, not other, like, okay. that other kennels did? Because every kennel is different. Yes. Because it's different in every country. Yep. I know with my travels, there are certain places that are very different. What are the ones that you, just particular ones, even like long circles or whatever you think? Long, long circles are brilliant. Lots of drink stops are brilliant. A hash with no drink stop. No. I was told a few years ago, and I've never went there, that the most boring hash in the world is somewhere in north of Norway. And apparently, and I was told this by two Australians from Broom Hash, apparently they just turn up in cars, do a trail, and then go home again. There's a couple of hashes like that. Yeah. It's, 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 uh, so I wouldn't like that. Like, I've got no incentive to go there. Have your attitude towards hashing evolved since you started? Yeah. I think so, but for, for good ways. In which ways? In so much as one of the things that hashing actually does, it, it gives the opportunity to meet people, but also if you've got someone that you think they need help, you can help them if you can help them. It's a global community. Correct. What do you think will be the future? For hashing. Where? And then I'm a little bit worried, concerned, whatever you want to call it, that a lot of hashes are getting old and we're not getting the younger people in to that because they have so many other things to think about. Distraction, should we say, entertainment, video games, whatever you want to. So I'm worried for the long term future of hashing. Yeah. But I'll see it out. What, in your personal opinion, would be how to get it out there for the younger generation? I know what we do at City Hash, but it's starting to fail now because university students don't care no, no, you're, in you're, the same way. I think there's a difference between pull marketing and push marketing. Mm. If you tell someone, oh, come along to that, and their expectation may be different to what they get. Whether that's right or wrong, everyone's a different person. Yeah, yeah. I, I know hashes that want to, oh, this is good, but I don't drink. I don't, yeah, 
I don't socialize that much, but I'm doing this because I got an outlet to exercise. Yeah, maybe they're not hashes, really. City hash, we have Muslims that don't drink, but they're up for the socialization. Uh, they like us making a complete kid out of ourselves. But that's funny as hell for that. Yeah, oh yeah. To be honest, it is. But God, this day and age with social media and everything, yeah. how would you get? them and what age do you think that they should start to get involved age is irrelevant to the maturity secondly is you find the hash you don't get recruited on that yes don't get me wrong i go around and i tell people oh come along on yeah. on a sunday yeah but i don't know i would say you've got to be normally over 30 ish to mm. you also maybe need a connection as we all know there's a lot of connections to military and so on all around the world. Isn't oh, it? yeah. So when you've got that connection. As I said, my it's... mum has called hashing or colonization gone wild. Hey, that's, I'll, I'll use that phrase. Yeah. Sorry to all of the Americans out there. <laughs> <laughs> now, you're, you're a load of wankers. What advice would you give to people that have just gone on their first trail and they're like, oh, is this for me? I'm not quite sure. What advice? First thing I would do before I gave them advice is I buy them a drink in the on in and say, what do you think about that? And then you start to judge. And I'm not judgmental, but you start to judge the person and whether they would do that again. And then question number two is, would you do this again? I don't give advice even to experienced people because you do not know who you're giving that advice to and whether they appreciate it or not. If I thought someone was in trouble, that's different. The hash is a community and we touched on that before about helping other hashers. Have you found or experienced or done it yourself of helping another hasher when they need it? Because it is a small community and it's global and helping hashers. That's what we should do. And yes, I have helped. I can't give you examples, but I've helped and people have helped me. And that's the whole community thing. And that's what we should do. We're united not by nationalization, by which country you're from or whatever. We're united by one thing. We all like a few drinks and a little bit of exercise and socialization. Out of all the traditions and preferences of the hash, what are your favorite and what do you think have evolved in a way that may be slightly outdated or some that just should go? As hashing start 1928. 38. It's a long time. Come on. It's a long time and, ago. And, and you're going on the Gisbert run in, in a week's time. I am. And I am as well. I have been going on the Gisbert run for a long time in any hash or those. Never been to London. So it's, Southeast London. Come to the Gisbert run. We go to his memorial and yep, everything. Like. You do. So. At his house. And his house. Uh, but it was 1938. I can bore people senseless um, when I explain, because you meet non-hashers and you tell them about it because you think well, maybe they would be interested or, or whatever. And then I can bore people about the whole hash history. Yeah. Started in 1938 in Malaysia, really shy, blah, 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 blah. And at which By point a person that was himself, a Scottish regiment like mine. Was he? I didn't know he was a Scottish. Highland and, 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 and I, I, yeah, did, I yeah. did, I remember now, yeah. That's why I wear the black watch tartan is part of King's Regiment. Anyway. Uh, I'm a Scot. Come on. I know. You're a Celt. That's all right. I'm a Celt. I am a Celt. You're a Celt. I'm a Celt. But I'm from a better part of the country, Wales. We're still Celtic. We have it in yeah, our We blood. are. Yeah. But yes, definitely that. I mean, what do you find about the new generation of hashers knowing about the history? I don't think they do. They do it because it's an activity they want to do, like joining a squash club, a tennis club, let's say. And they're not that interested in the history. Do you think it's important to know the foundations of where it came from? It's important to know about history in general. 
Regardless of the hash, if you don't know where you've come from or where your generations have come from, you can't progress forward because you're, say it again, you're stupid, you're stupid, you're so dumb. If it wasn't, yeah, anyway. Oh, you can cuss on us. Oh, okay. You get the idea. The future generations, I know people that have recruited hashes on Meetup, on Facebook, and other channels, but they come because they say, like on Meetup, do you like a bit of exercise and a drink, but they don't know everything else? Yeah. What do you think about that? I think you should be open and honest with people that you're trying to recruit and say, we are a drinking club with a running problem. You might get told naughty jokes, dirty stories, and you might get the, the mickey taken out of you. But that's up to the person recruiting and not everyone gets it right. What can you remember as your oldest cash memory that just sticks your head and you go, oh my God, I can't believe that's been in there. You're challenging my memory now because know. it's not good. No. Oh, no. I... Think about it. We can come back and I can record We can come back. To be honest, hashing's opened lots of doors for me. I've learned lots of things. I've met lots of wonderful people. Um, it, always, it always blurs into insignificance at times, which is unfair because the, the memories are good. What is your next big hash event? I've got to make sure that we... Apart from the Gisbert run. The and the hair, leap year hash. The hair that was going to do the trail for Swansea Jack on the 25th of February. We are. Is, we'll come out after has been this. <laughs> it's, it's going to be hospitalized. Oh, dear. So we won't be able to hair the trail. We might change the date. We might do whatever. But we look after each other. Out of all the countries you've been in, just name some of the countries you well, passed in. I've never been south of the equator, so I can't comment on that. But my favorite kennel in the world is Key West, followed by the Gypsies in the Palace in San Francisco, followed by, I have to say it, my mother hash, Swansea Jack. Which of those ones have a trail that you just go, oh my God, that was amazing. To be honest, some of the London ones have been pretty good. The ones with lots of drink stops. And usually, they're fl it's flat. The trail is flat. Tell the story about shit happens. Sorry? Tell the story about shit happens in the, the room room. Oh, okay. You learn things on the hash all the time. And when you think you've seen it all, you see some things. As I've mentioned, I was in Key West over Christmas and New Year. There's a, who was hairing a trail. It was actually a pub crawl, which is fine. Called Shappens or Shit Happens. But we abbreviated the Shappens because it's easier. And he told me, and I haven't used it yet, but I'm going to use it in two days time. The, the trick of having a bit of chalk tied to the bottom of a walking stick. So you don't have to bend down when you're laying the trail. Horrible. In the golf course. Oh, and when I we'll laid start the again. A memorable trail laying experience is when... I keep referring back to the last trail I laid, which was Key West. With Patrick Hash Traveler. With Patrick. I have to say this. I had to give responsibility of Patrick to a five-year-old hasher. <laughs> and there are some lovely photographs of Rook, Donkey Fluffer's son carrying Patrick around parts of Key West because I was busy laying trail and then busy following it. Except I wasn't really following it because I got a lift. I got a lift in a golf buggy around Key West to where have I laid the drink stops. Who gave you the golf buggy? So that was shit happens. I don't know whether it's his golf cart or whether he hired it, but... Or stole it. Or stole it, <laughs> yeah. Uh, we've done that before, but uh, so, so uh, you like, it? I've never even been in a golf cart before, let alone hashed in one. You basically did trail in a golf cart, which should happen around Key West with a green orangutan. Yeah, actually, no, I didn't have a green orangutan because Rook had green orangutan <laughs> at the time. But yes, they, they, yeah, 
Patrick Hash Traveler Green Orangutan was there. Thank you, Murphys, very much for nope. joining us on the On On podcast. Thank you, Run to Eat. Been lovely knowing you for, I don't know, 10, 12 years North. or more. And my mother. And your mother as well, who you, I didn't realize her hash name until today. She's been What's her hash name? Fat Bottom Girl. That's the one. To close the circle, here's the hash anthem sung by Mother Hash. Sweet.